Greetings everyone on the internet. This is your jolly YouTube expert, Daryl Eves. Now I'm really excited for today and let me tell you why is because for a very long time, I really wanted to do a new segment on my YouTube channel and today's the day. So here's what's going to happen today. Um, there are some amazing people out there in the world. Uh, they're very brilliant. They understand a lot. They have tips, they have tricks, they have techniques to literally help us develop an audience really get that audience to get more views and to monetize and make more money. And I'm going to literally go out and find them and bring them on for an interview, put them on the hot seat. So today we're actually going to have the CEO of Thinktopia, Patrick Hanlon. Now, if you haven't heard of this guy, he's completely amazing. Uh, he, he has a book, uh, primal branding that is required reading for the YouTube certification. And I'm telling you guys, I use this book with all my clients so they have a better understanding of what I'm trying to accomplish to really create something more than just a YouTube channel or more than just videos is really to make an impact. Now, if you're really interested in growing an audience and getting more views and really understanding how it actually happens and the steps that you need to take, then you definitely want to watch this interview. So stay tuned. Patrick, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for uh, taking time out of your busy schedule. Oh, you bet. Glad to be here. Thanks so much. Now, uh, I don't know if you know this, but you know, when I went through the YouTube certification, your book, Primal Branding, was actually required reading for the course. And there's actually uh, questions on the final exam that dealt with uh, your content. Did you know about that? Uh, I've heard something about that, yes. And, um, and that's terrific. But you only use, but they only use five, um, five pieces of uh, primal code in that case, as I recall. And uh, there are seven. They 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 actually do seven now. I they uh, started out with five. Now they're doing seven. But yeah, they're, oh, they're excellent. Okay, good. Yeah, they're more in depth. Well, the reason why I, I reached out to you uh, and wanted you to come and and do this little interview on my YouTube channel is because before I actually meet with a client. I actually have them uh, have the client read your book, Primal Branding, uh, just so that they have a good understanding of what I'm trying to accomplish when working with them. That's great. Yeah. And uh, I know that you've worked with some of the top uh, businesses in the world and worked on their, uh, you know, branding and and so on. Could you kind of give us a little bit about your background? Sure. Um, I came up with Primal Code because I had a a client problem that I was trying to solve and I started to th wonder why we believe in some products and services, uh, some companies, people even, um, more than others. And uh, I, so I started thinking first of all about, well, we trust them, but even more than that, we believe in them. And that got me, that led me straight to a belief system of what is actually a belief system and that led me then to identify the seven pieces of what, what I call primal code or social code. Yeah, and, and what I found fascinating is I've gone through, and I've, I've probably read that book probably at least 30 times or so, um, just because, you know, it's not always what the word is. I don't think I've read it 30 times. <laughs> <laughs> well, you wrote it, though. That's the difference. <laughs> But uh, I, I think the reason why I do that, it's not necessarily some of the words that are being said in the book. It's just some thoughts or impressions that I might get for another client. And I might miss something here or there. Um, and there's several books that I do this with as well. But this is definitely one, especially working you know, with marketing and advertising so that you can reach a, a, a greater appeal. However, a lot of my YouTube subscribers are actually people that would like to create content on YouTube and to grow an audience. And so, you know, what, what advice would you give them? What are the, the seven things that they would need to do? And what advice uh, would you give them uh, to grow that, that audience, create that culture, and uh, to be able to engage with that audience as well? Sure. Yeah. And, and that's, uh, I lost my train of thought there. I apologize for the last question, but that's what we do. We work, do work with Fortune 100 brands all over the country. We've worked with the United Nations. We've worked with the Gates Foundation and others. And, and but we also work with uh, fledgling entrepreneurs, uh, people who are just starting their business um, and trying to get them straight, uh, straightened out in terms of their strategy and what we call their brand narrative. And 
that brand narrative starts out with where you, who are you, you know, where you're from, where are you from, um, what are you about, you know, and why is what you're doing different than what other people are doing? Then you have to identify yourself, right? And uh, whether that's a new product, uh, new packaging, uh, or just who you are. And then how do you act? How do you perform? How, what's the experience all about? And then finally, what are the words that uh, we use? Not finally, but what are the words that we use to describe it? How do you describe yourself and make that different? Uh, what do you not and never want to become? And then who's the team that's leading it? And what I just did very informally is I took you through the seven pieces of Primal Code. The, what's your creation story? What's, what's your creed? What are your icons? What are your rituals? Uh, the lexicon, the language that you use, ice grande, skinny decaf, latte, you know, um, and then what do you not never want to become? This isn't uh, a droid, it's an iPhone, you know, and there are different ways that you use it. And then finally, who's the team? Who's leading it? And uh, who's, who are the rest of the people? And once you pull all that together, you are able to create a narrative, a storyline, uh, that people respond to. You've now connected on all the seven emotional touch points that people really need in order to feel that it makes sense, that uh, it's different than other things that are out there, uh, and basically it just feels better. So when people, when we work with Fortune 100 companies, uh, they are sitting across the table lots of times from buyers at Walmart or people at Target, or, or whoever, and what young entrepreneurs find themselves doing is they're sitting across the table from a VC company or their first client or their parents <laughs> or whoever that, or, their, or their spouse trying to explain what they're trying to accomplish. And if you have all of these, what we found is that if you have all seven of these pieces and you have a, a, a great story, each one of these pieces is differentiating. So that keeps you... Um, aware or um, cognizant of the fact that your product really does have to be different. You really do have to, and, and in being different, you do stand out. And when you have this narrative, you start to um, uh, drive preference because if people, if someone feels better about you than about someone else, they prefer you above that other someone else. So, yeah, so, that's preference, right? So Yeah, so then, let me ask you a question. So working with Fortune 100 companies, they're working with products and their own branding. What about individuals? Because, I mean, we're talking about content creators on YouTube. Yeah. Is there well, any differences? Yeah, let me point out that there are, what we're really talking about is how do you build a community. And when, because if you create a belief system, you attract others who share your beliefs. And whether that's two people, one person, or two people, um, or two billion people, it doesn't really make any difference. The, uh, that community, and there are communities, you've, built a, you've created a community, and those com you have communities that are around products and services, Nike, Apple, Starbucks, etc. You have communities around, um, uh, within companies called coworkers or employees. You have communities around um, cities, you know, whether it's LA or Brooklyn or New York, or Las Vegas, their communities that surround them. Uh, you have communities around personality brands, whether it's Lady Gaga or you, and uh, the brand called you. And then you uh, finally, there are communities in political and social movements. And so, and there may be other communities elsewhere, but uh, that's basically the way it breaks down. So when you start to think of this as community building rather than, hey, you're going out and getting customers and so forth, it changes the game a lot. And what these seven pieces of uh, primal code or social code uh, really give you is an unfair advantage against everyone else who's out there because um, you are pulling the strings, the emotional strings, the emotional touch points that your competitors, if they're not doing that same thing, you, they're not doing it and you are. And that's the unfair advantage. And, and that's where you literally take someone that's just an average individual to be a hardcore fan. You know, when, when you're saying this and you're kind of explaining this, and I think this is something that everyone that's watching this video could probably understand, um, is Taylor Swift. I, she has everything. And she just did something just recently uh, for her fans that engaged them.
Yeah, she swifted them, right? Exactly. I think they call it, which is, you know, a say what we would call a sacred word or part of the lexicon. Yeah, which was um, incredible. And great. Most- that's a great example, actually, of someone who's aware that they have a community out there. They know how to talk to their community. Uh, they know how to reward their community uh, of, of Advent. We call that community, we call them lots of different things. We call them fans, which is short for fanatics, by the way. We call them advocates. We call them, call them believers. We call them belongers. We call them uh, citizens and so forth. And her awareness of that and her acknowledgement of them uh, works, is, works both ways. It's a, it's a circle of joy. It really is, and I've I've worked with a lot of top brands and top YouTube channels, and uh, one in particular, um, they they were really trying to make it. They're very very talented, just like a lot of you guys uh, on on YouTube, but they weren't getting the momentum that they needed, and they were missing just a couple components of what uh, Patrick's actually talking about right here. And uh, one of those components came in and it changed their whole life. And what happened was is they actually had a defined leader and they started to talk about sacred words and so on and so forth. And it literally catapulted their, their YouTube channel from going from about 60,000 subscribers up to 2.8 million subscribers in about 18 months. And you know, right now they're over 4 million subscribers and um, just, just over a half a billion Uh, video views and so the reality is you know what it does give you an unfair advantage if you understand what's going on and I I truly uh, want to explain this that it's not manipulation and and a lot of people think that it is Um, and I think it comes back down to the end of the day that people want to belong and they want to feel a part of something wouldn't you say Patrick yeah absolutely people we are um hardwired as human beings to want to belong, to congregate with other people. I mean, the person, uh, I always say the monk, and the, the monk who's out on the mountaintop is really the anomaly and being alone or isolated is a form of uh, punishment, you know, in pretty much every society that's on the planet, right? And so uh, what we're really doing is we're propelling, we are engineering it so that uh, to take advantage of that, but it's, um, but these, it's very organic. You know, we're not, people can join. Remember, there are non-believers. There are people who don't want to belong to our community. They want to belong to somewhere else. You know, they don't want a droid. They want an iPhone or vice versa. And they don't want to live in Brooklyn. They want to live in Los Angeles or in the middle of Nevada. Right? And so uh, it's not manipulation, manipulation at all. Actually, it's counter to the traditional advertising um, motivated sort of, design principles. Yeah, and, and it's it, it's like this, when when people really feel a part of your community that you're building, and they, they really feel like they can contribute, they will contribute. And if they're recognized, they'll even contribute a lot more, and they'll become your advocate, because they'll go out, go out and find, you know, uh, people say, hey, you gotta check this person out on YouTube, it's amazing, you know, I spend so much time with him, he's engaging, he's always commenting on videos, he's including his, you know, uh, subscribers in, in the creation of his content. It's really, really good. And I think that's an important principle too, is it brings, uh, uh, it, it's, it's a lot different now, um, I, I believe, in how we actually communicate uh, with the world. I, I know for years it started, you know, the producers and so on telling you what you want. Well, now it's changed, and, and this is what a lot of clients don't understand. Uh, the audience can tell you what you want, you know, and if you provide that for them, that's where true power comes from and that's where you can really build a brand. And the people that really took off, they were really listening, uh, not not changing their persona, but listening to what their community wanted and gave them more of it, you know, and the authenticity is really, really important in this. So, you know, you can't say it's, it's really it. coming from the fans. It's, that's where it's all coming from. I mean, if the fans don't like what you're doing, they're not going to be fans anymore. And so that's what I mean, really, when I talk about it being organic. The other thing is that um, I'm agreeing with you that th- communications used to come from the top down. A manufacturer would tell you about their product and so forth. And as you say, it's flipped. The consumer's on top. Now the consumer is saying, hey, I have the money. You come find me. 
you know, and if you don't want to create these networks that, that help them participate in your brand, so-called brand, um, then you're kind of lost in today's world. And the, the thing really is, is that what we're providing is, you know, you have to think about, okay, we're talking about YouTube right now, but the, you have to consider the other social media too when you're creating your personal brand because it's not just YouTube, it's Twitter and it's everything else that's out there, anything else you want to use. And the, um, the ability to use these tools um, to determine, okay, what message am I going to put on these other, what am I going to say on YouTube, what am I going to say on the other social media, uh, really helps you deter, create this 360 degree surround that's around your fans your fan base and your community, fan base or community, yeah, and, Syn and, synonymous. Yeah, and what I found too is the more information that you're able to gather on your fans or the people that are consuming your content, um, then it'll help you figure out the best way to engage with them. Let me just give you another example of a client. Um, I, I explained to the client that uh, you know their fan base was you know 18 to 34 and they says there's no way that the 18 and 34 would be interested in this content um, because you know it's all about politics and all the other things that are there. And I'm like, no, it really is. Here's the people that are actually watching your video. And we literally changed the strategy and changed where we were actually putting the content to, for, for it to be discovered. And it catapulted. I mean, they went from 18,000 subscribers up to 50,000 subscribers and they got millions and millions of views on their videos. Uh, in just a few weeks of just realizing, oh, this is our audience. This is how we need to go after the audience. And this is where the audience actually congregate. Um, yeah. And so That's, I love hearing stories like that. I have one, too. There was a guy that was sitting in an audience when I was uh, speaking. When Primal Branding first came out, uh, I spoke to a group of entrepreneurs. And uh, one of the guys in the audience had a computer software company, let's say, I, it was in computer, it was in uh, technology, I kind of don't remember what, the, what it was exactly, but he was doing well, he had, well, he had about a two or three million dollar company. When he heard me say that uh, you can create communities inside of your own organization, um, which is important, we can touch upon that if we have time, but if you can create a community inside your own organization, you can also be, be more voted, motivated more mission driven and so forth and have a vision of a clearer vision that motivates uh, everyone, the employees. Then he went back to his office and he started going, okay, what's my creation story? What's my creed icons and so forth. Uh, two years later, he had like a $5 million company. No, he had a $12 million company and he sold it at that point. And um, through a twist of fate, <laughs> he was able to nine months later, he kept, kept his stock in the company. And nine months later, the new people uh, sold it for 150 million. Oh wow. <laughs> wow! Based on their culture, because they said we cannot recreate what you have already created. So it's better we're better off just buying you rather than trying to buy it. That that is amazing. Rather than create it. Excuse me. Now, Patrick, I know you took some time and you wrote this book, Primal Branding, and it was very very engaging. Uh, but recently, you just added a, another book. It's called The Social Code. What motivated you to write this book that's, what, we got it, 70 pages or so? It's a really quick read, but there's a lot of depth in here. What motivated you to do this uh, book? Yeah, well, The Social Code is a build on Primal Branding. Uh, basically, Primal Branding was written in 2004, 2005, and came out in 2006. And uh, a lot of things have happened since then. YouTube did not exist back in 2005 and six. And, it actually uh, did. <laughs> well, it existed in 2005, right? Yeah, yeah two th May of 2005, 2006. I, I actually uh, was one of the very first people to go onto YouTube. I got that little iPod that they were giving out on Craigslist to kind of coerce you to share it with your friends? <laughs> well, we've had a glut of things since 2005, let me tell you. And so uh, Twitter and, and uh, uh, lots of other things have come along, obviously. And uh, so what I wanted, I was talking in the book in Primal Branding, I was talking about uh, AOL Instant Messenger and how uh, weird it was that people were doing this and uh, chatting back and forth and so forth. And um, so obviously I had to be, had to update it. And that's what it's all about. And the Actually, the um, more to the core is that back in 
2001 when I first started talking about primal branding or about building communities, I spoke to hundreds, thousands of people <laughs> in very large uh, auditoriums and so forth uh, who had X's in their eyes when I started talking about brands that were uh, belief systems that in turn were com communities and to start thinking about their brand as a community. And you know, I'm often told that I was a little uh, prescient in that. And, uh, and I guess I was to some extent. So uh, we we're definitely, you know, the notion of brands as social communities, I hope isn't too foreign for some people. And, and that's and the ability to now build those. Yeah, and the, the interesting thing is- More important than ever, yeah. The interesting thing is that these brands, creators, whoever understand that, because that's the difference, because I've worked with a lot of clients and they're like, they're stuck in, you know, 1985, you know, 1970, yeah, there's a, there is and a they've been doing work, they've been doing business the same way, every way that they always did, right? Yeah, but the reality yeah. is, is the people that actually embrace this community, the culture, um, they're the ones that are exploding. The, the creators on YouTube that create and content and understand this, whether they know what they're doing or not, that they are doing the, the different fundamentals that's there, they're the ones that are really exploding from there. And I think well, the look big, at the way that Uber is just going out and creating a whole different kind of transportation medium. And, oh, oh you, you have to get a license for that. You have to do this, that, and the other thing. And they're breaking all these um, law, laws in some cases, I suppose, but these predetermined ways of doing business. And they're just going, I don't care. And I'm sure you're, a lot of your clients are going, well, this is, you don't understand. We're in the X business. We're in the manufacturing business. And it's, it's, <laughs> it's funny sometimes. No, you're going, no, you don't understand. Exactly. And, and the whole thing is, and, and what I really appreciate it, and the reason why I do give the book out to my clients is so that they can say, you know what? Maybe what I was doing before isn't the most effective way. Because the reason why I'm having you come in is I need some consulting. And maybe we need to change a few things uh, to really get ahead because the reality is, and this is what it comes back down to it, if you keep on doing the stuff that you always do and it doesn't work, that's insanity, you know? And, and, and things have changed, literally have changed. And um, instead of the way that we used to do things, it's different. It's all about community building. It's all about branding. That's why I said everything in business is branding. I, I truly believe this. And I think everything on YouTube is branding too. And it comes back down to the end of the day is once you understand that and understand how to build those communities around that brand, whether it's you or, you know, Fortune 500 company, 100 company, whatever, then that's when you start to succeed. And it doesn't matter if you're a musician, an artist, it doesn't matter if you're an author, speaker, you know, a lawyer or a doctor, whatever it may be, that's what it's about. It's all about branding. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because I was going to mention this earlier. Uh, you talk about you, you can be a musician or an artist or a real estate broker or a banker or, and by the way, you can be all of those things and be the same person, you know? And so we are, as individuals, we're members of a lot of different communities. You know, if you play poker, you are, are a member of that community, that little group of five people or whatever it is. Uh, if you play music, you're a musician and you have a whole different lexicon, you have different rituals, different words that you use, uh, different associations, different creation stories, uh, and so forth. And, you, and what's interesting is you, um, you can't take that part of that persona, that part of you, to, to a different one. You can't really take the rock and roll thing and go to a baseball game and expect people to understand what you're talking about, right? Uh, or, or pick a crazier example, but the uh, the real estate guy going to uh, a rock and roll concert, and um, and along with these personas, we have all of these different things, and so it's uh, I think that the one of the ways I try to explain it is that uh, think of the last time you had a new job uh, and you had to learn all the new words, all the um, all the jokes, all the anecdotes and so forth of, the, of this new place because you're trying to fit in and you're trying to become a member of that community. Yeah, and, and it's... Yeah, it, it, it's true. You know, and what, what I find fascinating and why I'm so uh, involved with the topic and, and it's part of you know, who I am and a part of my business and so on is because 
it, it, there's some power behind it too. And you don't have to have a big community to change the world. You just need to be unified. And this is a great way to be unified. And, um, you know, I, I've seen a lot of things happen and a lot of money made and a lot of lives touched because they had the right components of that community, which we're talking about, and they were able to make a difference. And yeah, that, and the, the, the whole thing, and, I, and I, I truly believe this, is everyone has a message, and I love YouTube because it gives a platform for people to get their message out, even though that I might not agree with a lot of the messages that are on there, um, but there are a lot of people in the world that would agree with them, and they can have that opportunity to build that community. So just in closing, um, I was just wondering, do you have any advice for these YouTube uh, creators, people that want to make it on YouTube, what would you advise them to do? Just kind of treat them like a client. And I want to kind of give, put my two cents in there too as well. First of all, believe in what you're doing. Uh, and then make sure that you create th this brand narrative. I think that's probably the most important thing, especially when you're starting out, is know where you're from, know what you're about, uh, find, figure out some way of uh, declaring yourself and identifying yourself so that people, so declaring yourself so that other people can identify you. Uh, create some kind of ritual um, and make viewing you a, an important ritual in other people's lives. Uh, create a vocabulary that surrounds yourself, that surrounds you so that um, people can identify you. Every community has its own language. and. Uh, and so that's important. That's an important thing, and be be sure to tell people what you're not, what you never want to become, and then just lead the way. You know, and the last thing I want to talk about, which is really important, is I, I alluded to this a little bit earlier. Um, I had a client, and it's the piano guys, and they were able to do so much in a short amount of time uh, once they were able to put all the components in place. And there was a lesson that I actually learned. And as a marketer, I want as many views and viral you know, hits and so on as we can possibly go. And they actually had a performance that was just amazing. And at the end of the performance, they do a little outtake and a little outro. And I know a lot of you on, on YouTube do those things as well. And they actually had a fight scene between Stephen Sharp Nelson and John Schmidt. And it was hilarious. I was like literally rolling on the ground. It was like totally, it took me off guard a little bit. And I was like, okay, this is gold. We got it. We got to put this out there. But the thing that uh, kind of blew me away, and it, it comes back to what you're teaching, Patrick, is the, as, as a group, you know, they came together and they says, no, that's not our culture. Even though that it was funny, that's not what we want to portray. And you know what? we need to reevaluate what we do in that ending. And so they did a very boring ending, but um, kudos to them because they understood what community they wanted, what they wanted to do, and they weren't gonna do anything that would harm that community. They're very careful of what they say and how they communicate so it doesn't be misinterpreted. And so, uh, you know, they get it. They get it and it's, it's a part of them and that's why they're successful. And, I, I'm saying to you, you know, listen to what Patrick's uh, been teaching. Uh, you need to get the Primal uh, branding book and also the social code. And if you're super smart, you'll look on the back because there's some binary on here. I first, I had to go, okay, I've got to figure out what this is. And so I went in and there's a little decode, there's a little message that you can decode as well on there. Um, and uh, it's, it's really fun. But the book's a quick read. I would very, very uh, encourage both books to, to be read and to be consumed and literally take it as um, homework assignments to figure out how you can apply it for your business or yourself or your brand so that you can be a lot more successful. Uh, thank you so much, Patrick, for coming on. I really appreciate the time. Uh, is there any last advice you want to give? Do well. Yeah, you heard it. You heard it right from the source. You got to do well. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. It's been great. Now, guys, I hope you enjoyed this interview with Patrick. I hope you enjoyed this new segment I have on my YouTube channel. Now, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments of anything that you learned, anything that was said that you didn't necessarily know or something that just sparked an idea. Put it in the comments. Let's learn and grow together. Now, here's the thing. 
I need your help. I really do. I need to know who you would like me to interview so you could ask your questions as well. So if you wouldn't mind putting on some ideas of who we can actually ask to come on for this uh, interview, put it in the comments as well and tell me why you think that they'd be a good guest. So uh, I look forward to uh, seeing you on the next video. If you haven't checked out anything that I've done yet, um, I have some live stuff. I have live Q and A's you can check out over here. And also uh, I do channel evaluations where I actually take uh, one of my subscribers and help them navigate through uh, you know, the challenges of starting a new channel. You can check out one of those uh, channel evaluations over here as well. So thank you so much. If you haven't subscribed yet, definitely click this button right here, subscribe. Uh, we have some great content that's coming out. And honestly, you know, YouTube would be nothing without you. So thank you so much for joining me and we'll see you on the next side.